Good morning. In recent years, Memorial Day has become one of our most highly anticipated holidays. We all look forward to a three-day weekend that simultaneously marks the end of the school year with the symbolic start of summer. We celebrate the great outdoors and the glorious time of year with family gatherings, games, and picnics. And all this is good. But people my age can still remember uh, the time when the focus of Memorial Day was remembrance and when families took the time to reflect on those who had given their lives in service to our country. We can remember church services, somber parades, and decorating the graves in the cemetery. We did have picnics and we did have fun, but we always took the time to remember. This Memorial Day, we ask that those of us here at Westminster Canterbury once again take the time to stop, reflect, and remember together. Accordingly, today, our fellow residents will present a Memorial Day service honoring the 1.1 million servicemen and women who gave their lives in our country's war. The service will allow us to stop, reflect, and remember all our loved ones, friends, relatives, and neighbors who serve the nation on our behalf. And in the midst of the current pandemic, let us also use this time to remember all the ordinary, extraordinary persons who have already risked their lives on our behalf and those who will continue to do so. The program will include psalms, music, poetry, and prayer. There will also be a roll call listing the names of deceased Westminster Canterbury residents who served in our armed forces. We hope the service will be meaningful, and we thank all of you now for watching and participating in it. Please uh, pray with me. Almighty God, we give thanks for those who have served in the armed services of our country. We remember the men and women who ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. May we not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom for which they fought and died. Today, we dedicate ourselves to a new dawn of freedom. Bless our efforts to live for these high values. Amen. America the Beautiful we so proudly call you home.
Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice and heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call upon him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. What shall I return to, to the Lord for his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Alan Seeger was a young intellectual, a graduate of Harvard University, and an adventurer. He joined the French Foreign Legion and, and um, fought in the war even before the United States entered the war in 1916. Uh, he's better known as the uncle of Pete Seeger, the folk uh, singer of the folk singer wrote a poem entitled, I Have a Rendezvous with Death, that reflects his Calvinist Presbyterian faith. I have a rendezvous with death at some disputed barricade. When spring comes back with rustling shade and apple blossoms fill the air. I have a rendezvous with death when spring brings back blue days and fair. It may be he shall take my hand and lead me into some dark land and close my eyes and quench my breath. It may be I shall pass him still. I have a rendezvous with death on some scarred slope of battered hill and spring comes round again this year and the first meadow flowers appear. God knows it were better to be deep pillowed in silk and scented down, where love throbs, throbs out in blissful sleep, pulse nigh to pulse and breath to breath, where hushed awakenings are dear. But I've a rendezvous with death at midnight in some flaming town when spring trips north again this year. And I, to my pledged word, am true. I shall not fail that rendezvous. Helen Singer died in a hail of German bullets on July the 4th, 1916. We continue uh, our Memorial Day service with the excerpt uh, from a book by Tim O'Brien, an American novelist who was born in 1946 in Austin, Minnesota. He was inducted into the United States Army uh, immediately out of college, and that being in the late 1960s, he soon found himself uh, in Vietnam where he served in combat as a member of the 46th Infantry Regiment, rising to the rank of sergeant. When he returned to the United States, he studied intermittently at Harvard. He was a journalist at times, and he became the author of several critically acclaimed novels. He is best known for his book, The Things They Carried, which was a collection of stories inspired by his experiences in the Vietnam War. This excerpt comes from that book. <clears throat> to generalize about war is like generalizing about peace. Almost everything is true. Almost nothing is true. 
At its core, perhaps, war is just another name for death. And yet, any soldier will tell you, if he tells the truth, that proximity to death brings with it a corresponding proximity to life. After a firefight, there is always an immense pleasure of aliveness. The trees are alive, the grass, the soil, everything. All around you, things are purely living, and you among them, and the aliveness makes you tremble. You feel an intense, out-of-the-skin awareness of your living self, your truest self, the human being you want to be, and then becoming by the very force of wanting it. In the midst of evil, you want to be a good man. You want decency. You want justice and courtesy and human concord, things you never knew you wanted. There is a kind of largeness to it, a kind of godliness. Though it's odd, you're never more alive than when you're almost dead. You recognize what's valuable, freshly as if for the first time, you love what's best in yourself and in the world, and that may be lost. At the tower, hour of dusk, you, you sit at your foxhole and look out uh, over a pale river turning pinkish red, and at the mountains beyond, and although in the morning you must cross that river and go into the mountains and do evil things and maybe die, even so, you find yourself studying the colors of the river, you feel the wonder and awe of the setting of the sun, and you're filled with a hard, aching love for how the world could be and always should be, but now is not. Our next offering will be The Ballad of Roger Young, written by World War II Army composer Frank Lesser, who also wrote Praise the Lord and Pass the Ammunition. It was first performed in March 1945. The ballad is a eulogy for inf infantryman Army Private Roger Wilton Young, who was killed while successfully destroying a Japanese machine gun nest in the South Pacific's Solomon Islands on July 31st, 1943. His actions saved his 20 platoon mates. The lyrics are based on Young's posthumous Medal of Honor uh, citation. Oh, they've got no time for glory in the infantry. Oh, they've got no use for praises loudly sung. But in every soldier's heart, in all the infantry, shines the name, shines the name of Roger Young. But in ambush lay a company of riflemen, just grenades against machine guns in the blue. But in ambush there's this one of twenty riflemen,
John 15, no greater love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down his life for his friends. Marching Men by Marjorie Pictall. Under the level winter sky, I saw a thousand Christs go by. They sang an idle song and free as they went up to Calvary. Careless of eye and coarse of lip, they marched in holiest fellowship. That heaven might heal the world, they gave their earth-born dreams to deck the grave. With souls unpurged and steadfast breath, they supped the sacrament of death. And for each one far off apart, seven swords have rent a woman's heart. In the Richmond community where Bob and I lived for many of our retirement years, we enjoyed the company of our neighbor, Frank Mayock. We learned of his years as a pilot with the U.S. Navy and even of his experience teaching Red Sox baseball player, Ted Williams, how to fly. But most notable was his Navy service as a torpedo bomber pilot with the USS Yorktown in June of 1944 in the Pacific Theater, where he successfully sank a Japanese aircraft carrier. I'm honored to read to you the citation given to him for the award of the Navy Cross, which was presented to him. But first, I would like to explain the criteria for the award. The Navy Cross may be awarded to any member of the U.S. Navy or Marine Corps who distinguishes himself or herself by extraordinary heroism while engaged in action against the enemy of the United States. The acts to be commended must be performed in the presence of great danger or at great personal risk and must be performed in such a manner as to render the individual highly conspicuous among others of equal grade, rate, experience, or position of responsibility. And the citation reads, the President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Navy Cross to Frank Mayock, Lieutenant United States Navy, for extraordinary heroism in operations against the enemy while serving as pilot of a carrier-based Navy torpedo plane of Torpedo Squadron 1 embarked from the USS Yorktown in action against the enemy fleet west of the Marianas Islands during the first battle of the Philippine Sea on the 20th of June, 1944. Courageous in the face of intense anti-aircraft fire and strong fighter opposition, Lieutenant Mayock participated in a successful close-range torpedo attack, which resulted in two torpedo hits on an enemy carrier. After releasing his torpedo, he gallantly fought off several attacking enemy fighters and skillfully navigated his aircraft to his task group after nightfall. By his brilliant airmanship, aggressive fighting spirit, and unwavering devotion to duty, Lieutenant Mayock contributed materially to the success of our operations in this historic engagement. And his great personal valor in the face of grave peril was in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Frank Mayock, moved to Westminster Canterbury in 2007 to enjoy his remaining years until his death in 2012. I shall read the names of the Westminster Canterbury 
veteran residents who have died. Bobbitt Aiken, Wilbur Allen, Leonard Anderson, Joe Antelli, Parker Archibald, Philip Arnest, Lonnie Baker, Erwin Barnard, Paul Bates, Joe Blackburn, Clyde Bradshaw, Henry Brokenborough, Isabel Bryant, Wadsworth Bug, Jack Butterworth, John Briarley, Nolan Carter, Norman Chatton, Stuart Christian, Donald Cobb, John Cook, Everett Koppel, John Counts, William Correll, Robert Cummings, John Davis, Donald Thaw, Ellen Dining, Bill Duke, Miller Eason, William Eagleford, Taz Ellett, James Fisher, James Fitzgerald, James Fox, Ted Francisco, Raymond Frank, John Cole Gale, Dick Gordon, Jack Heberstadt, John Halsey, William Hamilton, John Hanna, Ben Harmon, Richard Harrison, Bill Hazelgrove, Jackie Hazelgrove, Arthur Hendrick, James Hensley, Brian Higgins, Al Holfa, Bill Hopkins, Edward Irby, Sam Jackson, Charles Jenkins, Joe Jennings, DeLacy Jones, John Kelly, Harold King, Robert Kluge, Ben Rokember Lamb Jr., John Lambert, David Landron, Ed Lane, Arthur Lee, Carl Linder, George Little, DeWitt Loomis, Ray Lovelace, Madison Macon, Robert Mullaney, Waverly Marable, Bill Marshall, Thomas Mason, Jesse Mays, Frank Peacock, Jack Maxwell, Horace McGowan, Bernice McFarlane, Wally McGraw, Hunter McGuire, James McLaurie, Donald McVeigh, Christopher Melvin, Andy Metz, Richard Misha, Ch Charlie Miller, Joel Morgan, Joe Murdoch, Louis Mays, H.D. Northington, Nielsen, Neil November, Percy Omahandra, George Osman, Bob Painter, Merrill Pasco, John Pearsall, George Pendleton, Park Pendleton, John Perkison, Connie Klein, Merrill Placedead, Clarence Price, Lee Putney, Roland Rackett, Tom Rice, DeVoe Reddick, Wayne Robertson, Henry Royster, Dorothy Sachs, Barry Saunders, Beverly Schools, Russell Scott, Margaret Seeler, Bob Seiler, Al Shrink, Stuart Shoemate, Edward Smith, Gig Smith, John Sperry, Mike Stewart, John Stoltz, Frank Stuff, Charles Sutton, Charlie Terry, Allentown, John Tucker, Tuxke Lynn, Ernest Trice, Jacob Van Doren, Phoebe Wallace, Jim Walmsby, Harry Weeks, Louise Wells, Ernie Near, Harry Whitlock, Gene Wright, Richard Cummingham Wright, Daniel Wilkinson, Richard Williams, Henry Wilson, Richard Wilshire, Calvin Weissman, Norman Wood, Robert Younger, 
all is well, slavely lest, God is nigh. A reading from Psalm 46, verses 1 through 11. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams Make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. As we conclude this service, let us offer to God our prayer. O God, to believe in you is everlasting life. We know that as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with us. Knowing of this life-giving presence, we have remembered this day some of those who have passed through that valley into death through military and other forms of national service. We are reminded of the poet's words, no man is an island entire of itself and any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved with mankind. So Lord, we join in thanksgiving for the dedication and the witness of those brave men and women. As we conclude this memorial service, Lord, may we leave mindful of their sacrifice with an ever deepening commitment to your peace your shalom, and your salam. And in your holy name we pray. Amen.